that doesn't really make sense. I don't know. It just doesn't hit right. And also, I don't like to, like, stare at a screen longer than I have to, which is, like, pretty long. But, um, I actually, okay, so I listened to three audiobooks, but I also read three digital books. Um, so let me just start with the audiobooks. are 
twist to the actual game and like it gets like fucked up and like really good like in my opinion like I just it was just uh I don't know like I gave it five stars I know some people didn't like it that much but like I really enjoyed listening to it I was like holy shit like there's like meaning behind it and like I mean I think you could pretty much assume from this that like <laughs> if it's extreme hide and seek obviously there's gonna be a little bit of like you know what I mean um so that was like really that was really interesting to me um uh so I highly recommend that I also read now to like the digital books okay one was actually for school and that was The Trouble with Normal by Michael Warner. I read this for my queer rhetorics class and um, I read like the PDF version and um, I did not read it because it was just for school. It was like, it's nonfiction, whatever, but um, it's called The Trouble with Normal, Sex, Politics, and the Ethics of Queer Life. And basically, uh, it's just to give like a, sum a general summary, it's just like how um, in order to be like accepted, uh, in order for queer people to be accepted into society, a lot of the time they have to fit this like, qu like quote unquote normal uh, persona or whatever. Like you have to, in order to be like seen as uh, traditional life and then it's like okay yeah sure you're gay but like that's not the case for everybody like people are imperfect people have these people are multifaceted so I thought it was very it was very interesting a lot of cool discussions on that in class so I also read two poetry books um which I found I found that um these two I got from Libby I read on Libby Obviously, I like to have a physical poetry book, but in terms of reading a book physically online, like on a digital screen, I think that I'm okay with reading poetry, and maybe I'm just, maybe this is just a stepping stone into being able to read, like, full-blown novels on, like, the digital screen, but, but I found that it was easy for me to digest on the screen, you know, like, I don't know, there's something about, like, reading on the screen. I cannot fully describe it, but uh, I found that I was able to do this easily. Um, so I first read Helium by Rudy Francisco, which I had um, heard some of his spoken word poetry on YouTube um, from Button Poetry, uh, and I really enjoyed it, and I've always wanted to like get one of his books. He has a couple of poetry collections out. And so I, um, so I saw that it was on there and I borrowed it and I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was a five star for me. I really like Rudy Francisco and I definitely am interested in reading his other book, which this was Helium and the, this came out in 2017. And his other one, or does he have more his other, like, more popular one is, um, I'll Fly Away, which came out in 2020. It appears he has more books, but I, I had only seen the two, so I'd have to look into that. I don't know, sometimes, um, sometimes, uh, when it comes to poetry collections, uh, it, like, the next book will just be, like, a mixture of, like, the same old poems, like, if those were, like, self-published or something. I honestly don't know if that's the case, but, like, um, 
which is called um, Sweet Young and Worried, and I really, really want to read it. Um, so anyways, uh, five stars to Rudy Francisco. The other poetry book I read was Halsey's poetry book, I Would Leave Me If I Could. Now, honestly, the thing is, with any poetry collection, um, this is spent 
Even if 